Salute to all the real ones out there. It's your boy Mike coming at you again with another video. All right, uh, for all you guys who've been seeing my content, you like the direction that my channel was going, I need you to like, comment, subscribe, share the videos with anybody you think may benefit from them. And just remember, I'm trying to build a little community over here whereby men can come across this type of information and be inspired to become their best self, you know? So that's what we're doing over here. It's all about positive vibes. You know, growing, growing, learning, each one teach one, and trying to overall self-actualize. All right, so without further ado, today's topic is going to be about why I left the United States of America. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, I'm originally from Ohio, uh, and I joined the military and expanded my horizons. But before then, uh, to give you a little background on, let's say, my family situation and who I am. I'm the oldest child. So in, in total, I have three siblings, uh, two on my mom's side and one is on my dad's side. And in my own humble opinion, not to like pat my own back or come off like I'm cocky or whatever, but I feel like I'm the one who set like a lot of records in our generation, being like the first one or the most no noteworthy one to accomplish certain things at a young age. So for example, I don't know about every, about my older cousins or whatever, but I know I had a job at 16 uh, working at Fazoli's, that little Italian restaurant. If y'all know anything about it, they, had, they used to have some bomb-ass breadsticks. Uh, like, I got a license also at 16. Uh, I might have been, like, the first one who really slid down and had an open, uh, had a real relationship with, let's say, a pretty girl that, that I went after uh, when I was uh, 17, right? Uh, I was the first one to like really move out and have my own place for real at 18. First one in our uh, generation to join the military. First one to learn a foreign language. The first one to live overseas. The first one to attend, let's say, a top tier university in a foreign foreign land. Uh, the, and, and from what I've seen, I was the first one who for real like was with a woman, got engaged, like with a woman, introduced her to everybody got engaged and then got married like I, there was a lot of things i just feel like i was the first one to do you know uh and i'll probably be the first one to hit six figures so it's a lot of like milestones that i've reached whereby i feel like my contribution to our generation is letting the younger ones who are, who are looking up to me know that so much more is possible than what has already been achieved in our family so I'm the one who wants to push the envelope real far and inspire the younger cats that's that's in our family thinking about what they can do or what's possible in this world, right? So that's like a little big breakdown on me and you gotta think like with all those things that I accomplished, that would naturally make me be the one who has a mentality to want to travel and see the world and move away from, let's say, Ohio. So the first thing I'm gonna say about traveling is that it really enriches your spirit. It's almost impossible for you not to grow and learn and adapt to different things when you're away from everything that you are familiar with and you come across different people from various cultural backgrounds, even maybe they have a, they have a different language or a different understanding of what you're used to. So case in point, you're from America. Everything in America is speaking with English, unless you're like in certain southern states where Spanish is prevalent. But when you, let's say, go to, I don't know, Japan, that's, that's, you can't even fathom how, how, how just on the opposite end of the spectrum Japan would be compared to the United States. The language is different. What they find important is different. Uh, the food totally on the other side of the table from what you would expect in America, right? So even if you just stayed there for a week, ate the food, chopped it up with some people who found you cool and went out to do the things that they normally are into when they have time off of work, for example, you would you will have experienced so many things that are in stark contrast to what you do in the America. So how could you not grow and adapt and learn and feel like now you are aware of a different culture and a different way of life, right? So by seeing and experiencing new environments, you adapt and grow as a person overall. 
new areas present different people, culture, and value systems. All right, which is always interesting because you might start to do a comparison between what you see in the states and what you've seen in the co country you went to, and you might actually like the the way that they're doing it over there. There you go. Uh, you get to try new foods, drinks, customs, and traditions. That's always the best part, you know. Living in America, I always liked, uh, let's say, Mexican food. But imagine if I go to Spain. What? <laughs> imagine what I'll eat there. Or uh, Turkey. Like, Turkey, I love Turkish food, yo. I, I, I bet anybody black, real talk, if you live in the States and you like eating pork and all this other stuff, barbecue and soul food, quote-unquote, Oh, I'm guaranteeing you eat Mexican food too. I'm guaranteeing if I slide you some Turkish food, you'll be, dang, what is this? You feel me? Uh, the challenge of adaptation can also be exhilarating. You know, you're stretching your limits as a person. You're putting yourself in a situation where you're forced to grow, right? And I always tell you, inside of your comfort zone, how can you really grow? It's the same shit all the time. Uh, you have a sense of personal fulfillment and accomplishment. Uh, and another thing about traveling is like you get a big picture or at least a more expansive view of the world. So I'll give you an example. I made two videos about living in Germany, but now I'm going to kind of highlight on some of the things that I noticed uh, upon my arrival and like within the first six months where I could report back to y'all what I learned. Right. So. When I moved to Germany, it allowed me to thoroughly weigh the pros and cons of the US, USA and compare them objectively. You know, everything from how the government set up to the tax structure to what Germans find important versus what we find important in the United States to how we carry ourselves to, I mean, literally it's so many different things that are opposite, right? Uh, so one thing I could tell you about life in Germany is that everybody has a decent standard of living because they have a socialist system. So there are many programs, rights, and uh, things that are enacted in the society to make sure that everybody has like a base level of living. Uh, even the police force is structured totally different and the rights that they have are limited. So it's basically like in, in, the, in, in, in Germany, a cop will be very, very careful on how he approaches you and how he Im Im impedes on your abilities to do what you want or impedes on your rights or freedoms. Transfer that over to the United States. You see all different types of black people just getting shot down like dogs from the police. And, and it's justified. They try to justify the shit. Even with body cams, they over here trying to backpedal and explain where the officer felt threatened and this and that. And you, you would never get that shit off in Germany, yo. Even just pulling your gun and aiming to shoot, you better have a huge reason to do it. It better be totally justified because if not, y'all has to be under the German jail for taking a human life just because you think you a cop and you walking around like Billy, Billy Badass. This ain't no fucking Western. Another thing about Germany is uh, that I really like, me personally, since I'm a dude who has like OCD, I like everything being clean and organized. I just feel like it makes your life easier and less stressful, right? But Germany has the same mindset as a culture and as a country. Uh, they're way more clean. They have a lot of structure. They're organized, safer, and they even have a higher education rate than America. So that's something that I've always found important. Um, another big thing. GMO foods that are widely sold in America are straight up banned uh, in Germany. And that can also be seen with just the average person that you see in Germany. Right? So the, the, the average person in Germany seems to be more fit and has a better appearance than that of what you see as the average in America. You know, obesity is not a problem in Germany, for example. Uh, another thing I enjoy is that the drivers are more skilled and alert due to uh, the regulations. They have unrestricted speed zones, which allows you to really push cars to the limit. Uh, and driving is more fun and less, there's, there's overall less accidents and problems. And you have an active, faster paced lifestyle where people take advantage of good weather by being out, walking, bike riding, and just overall wanting to uh, be in tune with nature.
You know, it, it, it's not, it, I'm no stranger to walking in a park and seeing it just packed with people from all different ages, races, and ethnicities out there really just enjoying nature, you know? And that's a beautiful thing to see. Now, in my other videos, I didn't really mention any cons. Okay, so we're gonna jump straight into the cons that I noticed as well, you know? Uh, Germany is very bureaucratic. There are many barriers to hurdle in order to accomplish your goals. There's always more steps to take. Like, so for example, if you wanted to start start a new job, you might have to sign on for three years to become certified before officially being hired. Uh, whereas in America, you can do the job if you're skilled enough. So think about like if you're a waiter or a waitress in the United States, that's pretty much just being able to convince whoever's the hiring manager that, hey, you know how to carry a tray, you know how to talk to people. You can say on your resume that, hey, I've worked in a restaurant before, this, that, and the third. But there's no real high certification that's, that they're expecting in their hand, unless it's like top tier restaurant. But in Germany, it's pretty much like, you need to have like a, a gastronomy, a, I think that's what it's called, gastronomy certification in order to just work in the uh, restaurant branch. Another example of like how everything just has more steps and it's usually more complicated than it is in America is let's say you wanted to move in or out of an apartment. More than likely, uh, when you move in, you got to come with a three month deposit off rip. Then you might even come into a bare place that's completely like empty where you have to build everything from the ground up. And it'll be smaller and more expensive than what you get in the States, hands down. I mean, you got to think, Germany is about, let's say, a little bit bigger than the size of Ohio. But it has 80 million people plus packed into that small uh, area. So it's very condensed. Meanwhile, in the United States, we have 50 states that are, and most of them are even bigger than Ohio. Ohio just has the seventh highest population. But you have that huge mass of land, but you only have 300 and, uh, what, 50 million? So, I mean, you have way more space per person. In the United States, you can be hired at a job just for your experience and your competence. Uh, now, I kind of jumped off topic, my bad. Uh, if, and also, if you move into a place in the United States, it's probably going to be a place that already has the basic appliances already set. It's move-in ready. And if you want to move out, you can probably do it in a month or less. You see, so... There's, it's just easier in America if I'm comparing it to Germany. Back to Germany, there's a ton of rules that impede on your freedoms. Uh, weapons are definitely banned. So if you're thinking like, oh, I'm a hardcore weapon enthusiast. I like my M4 with all my attachments. I like to go to the woods and shoot it up. I like to go hunting and stuff. Yo, in Germany, you're going to have a whole lot of regulations to even have a weapon. Got to probably be part of a hunting club and... They're going to do a background check and it's real thorough. Now, that's adding to why it's so safe, but that's just an example of how like limited it is as far as you being able to just do whatever the hell you want. Uh, even if you want to customize your car, it's going to be very limited. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have an agency that's going to come swoop down and be like, nope, your car can't be that low. Nope, you can't have your tent that dark. Nope, you can't have an exhaust that's that loud or that, that spews out that much let's say toxins into the environment. Even paint jobs, you ain't gonna see nothing ridiculous in Germany, yo. It's pretty much gonna be just standard colors. Uh, having a full-time job, even sometimes will limit you from having a side job. So in America, yo, you can, it doesn't matter if you have three jobs, hey, you hustling, it's all good. Let you be in Germany, have a full-time job, and then they find out you also got a little side job where you getting paid. Oh yeah, you probably gonna catch some hell for that. Uh, there's also, as I mentioned before, less space per person, less privacy. And United States, let's not forget, is considered the land of the free. All right. Uh, also notice in Germany, it's not the country you want to be in if you plan on making tons of money. I mean, social, socialism will see to it that they'll garnish a huge amount of your uh, wages because you got mandatory health care, you have mandatory insurances, and high, a high tax rate. Uh, jobs typically don't pay much unless you're highly specialized. Financial authorities will sweep over your earnings with a really fine tooth comb. Think of IRS on steroids. Uh, you have a limited incentive to run your own business uh, due to the fact that like, 
you're totally on your own when you run your own business and you're, you're going to be limited as far as how much money you can make because you have mandatory insurances that you have to pay. So for example, let's say I have a, a barber shop in the United States. Real easy. All I got to do is just uh, give space and whatever barber comes into my shop, he shows, hey, I can cut hair. Cool. And he pays me to be able to cut hair in my shop. But my wife had two hair salons. She just recently sold one. But for every worker she has, she has to pay insurance for them. You see, so it's way more expensive per worker. Meanwhile, in the States, she would just be capitalizing off of their labor since they're paying her a cut to uh, work in her shop. It's totally different in Germany. Uh, Germany is definitely heavily influenced by feminism. Uh, so the women are walking around very empowered. You have this gender equality that's like stifling. And that's the reason why you have also very low uh, replacement levels. Like most women aren't having kids. They're going to wait until their 30s and all this other bullshit. So feminism has a real tight lock on Germany. Uh, and I feel like this dynamic breeds soft and effeminate men who compared to other masculine cultures come off as like homosexual and or, and or pushovers. Like I'm not going to say all German dudes are pushovers, but I'm just saying by and large, their culture is not built on being macho or nothing like that. Like you'll shine hard as a beta in Germany. Smoking and drinking infiltrates every age group from young teenagers to old adults and like cigarettes are smoked at a way higher rate than I've ever seen it in America. Uh, while in America, like you smoke cigarettes, it's kind of looked at, looked down upon, like you antisocial, right? And there's countless others, but overall the pros outweigh the cons. Now the thing is, uh, I lived in Germany, but I'm not confined to just that place. Like I feel like I'm gonna live on, I'm gonna die on foreign soil, but I don't think it's gonna be Germany. But you know, Germany was just the first place that I really stayed in. That's the I've never been in one country that damn long. You know, almost ten years of my life. Now I'm curious about South America and more of Asia and. Uh, Africa. But that's neither here nor there. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll holler back.